Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning to uh, all of you. Uh, welcome to the second day of webinar on pharmacy perspectives on COVID-19 vaccination. Um, as introduced earlier by Dr. Norin, I'm Aisha Saad, the session moderator. And thank you for taking the time off from your busy schedule uh, and join these webinars organized by the UITM Faculty of Pharmacy. Uh, yesterday, we had learned about the expanding roles of Malaysian pharmacists in the era of COVID-19 pandemic and uh, a pharmacist experience and role in the vaccination program in the UK. This morning, we are very fortunate to have two distinguished speakers who play key roles in the vaccination program rolled out in Malaysia, and hopefully they would demystify the processes in the COVID-19 vaccine development and registration. So welcome Dr. Badul Hisham from Nafamanyaga, and also Dr. Jaslina from NPRA. In the first part of the session, uh, but the, uh, is given by Dr. Jaslina from NPRA. So before that, let me briefly introduce Dr. Jaslina Liza Datuk Jamaluddin, who has vast working experiences in multiple healthcare settings in the Ministry of Health, Malaysia. She is currently heading the Industry Development and Communication One Stop Center section in the National Pharmaceutical Regulatory Division, or better known as NPRA, since it was first established in 2019. Under Dr. Jaslina's leadership, this section is tasked to guide the industry into product registration and cosmetic notification in Malaysia. And that includes the guidance to register COVID-19 vaccine during this COVID-19 this COVID pandemic era. So indeed, today we have the privilege to listen directly from Dr. Jaslina on this hot topic, registration of COVID-19 vaccines in Malaysia. Without further ado, I pass over the session to, uh, to Dr. Jaslina. Uh, Dr. Jaslina. Thank you, uh, Prof. Aisha. Okay, very good morning to you. Very good morning. Assalamualaikum to everybody. So my name is Dr. Jaslina Liza. Sorry, I don't have a camera on my desktop. Okay, okay. should we know the pandemic going to happen? We will choose the one that have the camera. I'm very sorry, because MPRA is all PNC over here. Okay, all right. So if you want to see me, I have my picture in the poster, webinar poster. <laughs> okay, so uh, giving talk in this uh, VC mode. Okay, we cannot see the participant here. Yeah? We cannot hear the response from participant. I only can see uh, Prof Aisha. <laughs> okay, all right. So topic today, my topic today is registration of COVID nineteen vaccine in Malaysia. Okay. All right. So who are MPRA? We are all pharmacies. Okay, we are all also regulator officer. Okay, so MPRA is a stand for National Pharmaceutical Regulatory Division. We are one of the five direct division that workings under the Pharmaceutical Services Program in Ministry of Health Malaysia. So we are the national regulatory agency for Malaysia to regulate the medicine and cosmetic in this country. So our work is to ensure the quality, safety and efficacy of medicine throughout the register pro registration process and also the post-registration process and also the licensing scheme. Okay. So coming to world pandemic, okay, now is COVID-19. Okay, it's world pandemic okay as you all know right now is no treatment whatsoever and vaccine is the only prevention the only option that we have so every country in this world needs the vaccine so the problem is at the same time creating an extremely high demand worldwide so among all of the vaccine produced in the world okay which one is the effective one so everybody is claiming these are the important one these are the most effective one so which one to choose Okay, we have very short, very narrow time to get the vaccine and we are also very small country with very small currency. Okay, we're going to fight with all of the big country, big currency, big power on how to get the vaccine. Okay, so 
this we have to pull out a very strong strategy. I mean, the, uh, every country in the world pulling out a very strong strategy to get the piece of the cake to get the vaccine into country. Okay, so on 14 October 2020, okay, JKJAV committee is created. Okay, so JKJAV is actually the special committee for ensuring access to COVID-19 vaccine supply. Okay, so I'm part of the committee as well. Okay, so it is established to ensure timely access to the supply of COVID-19 vaccine for Malaysia. Okay, so on 24 February 2021 is the kickstart of the National COVID-19 Immunization Program. So here are the links to the JKJFB website. I think you can have a look afterwards, okay, to read all about the JKJFB program and what are the strategy to help the country. So who are the members of the JKJFB? Okay, so we have seven ministries, including the MOH, MOF, MOSTI, and so on. And also we have the MKN, the National Security Council, we have the Attorney General Chambers and also we have a special advisor for the Prime Minister. We're going to advise us on the public health. Tan Sri Jamila. Okay. So these are the workforce, okay, the governance structure of the National COVID-19 Immunization Program. So as you can see here, the, on the left, we have the committee, JKJAV, directly working under the cabinet. Okay, you have two chairs, co-chairs together. When we have the meeting, okay, it's going to be chairs by two ministers, YB Minister of Health Malaysia and also YB Mosti. Okay, so uh, as you can see on the left, okay, we have the ones, the team, the committee, that uh, okay, that work for the policy of the vaccine and how to get the vaccine. Okay, and we have the teams that uh works on the finance, the procurement. Okay, selecting the budget, creating the budget. Okay, we have the team for logistic, registration, communication, and so on. So where is MPRA in this workforce? Okay, so the third box on the left. Okay, MPRA is at the registration. Okay, so our function here is to uh, provide the registration for the COVID-19 vaccine. Okay, so speaking of pandemic, okay, we need the vaccine urgently to be used in Malaysia. So why we still need the vaccine to be registered? Okay, so why? Okay, this is why because of this act, okay, Control of Drugs and Cosmetic Regulation 1984. Okay, that is no, okay. Hello, okay. There is no person shall manufacture, sell, supply, import, process, or administer any product unless the product is registered and the person that holds the appropriate license issued under this regulation. Okay, again, what is the purpose uh, to register? What is the purpose of product registration? No, not just in part every form of product in Malaysia, what is the purpose? That is to ensure that the product that released into the market to be used uh, by human is of the quality, it have the quality, it have the safety, and it have the efficacy. You need the product for, in the terms of quality, you need the product that, it is the real product, the real ingredient that you want in the in the, in the the product, not just a, a normal saline water, okay? You need it to be of the quality, the correct ingredient, the correct uh, mix of the ingredient. And in terms of safety, you need the product to be safe. Okay, you inject the product, it doesn't cause any, it doesn't cause any allergic reaction. That is safety. Okay, you need the product to be efficacy, to be efficacious, meaning it's uh, give you the effect, the medicinal purpose that you want. Okay, so these are the things that we look into. Okay, so MPRA register product that fulfill the registration criteria. So this is the definition of the product. So that means a drug is in a dosage unit or otherwise for use wholly or mainly by being administered to one or more human beings or animal for medicinal purpose or a drug to be used as an ingredient of a preparation for a medicinal purpose. Okay, this is very important. Okay, the, in, the, the definition is very important because sometimes people do come to MPRA be bringing the entire garlic, okay, claim as a product, okay. So, uh, it, it, it's funny, but it's happened in MPRA, okay. All right, so the next slide, okay, what do we mean by medicinal purpose? Medicinal purpose is any of this claim. To elevating, treating, curing, preventing, okay, diagnosing a disease, contraception, inducing anesthesia, e maintaining, modifying, preventing all of this wording, controlling with body weight, the famous one, and even as simple as gender maintenance or promoting 
of health or well-being. Okay, if a product have all of this, uh, have any of this medicine, medicine purpose, medicine claim, but it's not registered, that is wrong. It must be registered. Okay. Okay, so now if you have, you, you are a company, so you have a COVID-19 vaccine, you want to register to MPLA, first thing first, you must know uh, where, what is the, the category of the product. Okay, this is a for, this is important to get your, to submit your application. You cannot submit to the wrong category. The registration application will be rejected immediately. Okay, so the new drug product. Okay, the first one, the new drug product, actually is an innovative product. That's mean the product is new in the world. Okay, it's never registered uh, in Malaysia. It's never been used in Malaysia. So it will go under this category, new drug product. So we have biologics, generics, health supplement, uh, vet products and natural products. We also have a cosmetic and uh, combination products. Combination products is a, a combination of drugs and medical device. For example, insulin inside the medical device that is considered as a combination products. Okay, so uh, where is uh, your vaccine, what, which category? Okay, so mm, the vaccine is in the biologics category. Okay, because it's been produced by biotechnological methods. Okay, it's derived from living organism. Okay, it meets uh, from proteins, big molecules, and it mitigates the natural biological substance in our body. Okay, so the category of the vaccine COVID-19 uh, to be uh, registered to be sent into registration, okay, it will be in the biologic category. Okay, so again, who register the product? Okay, who will send the registration application of the COVID-19 to MPRA? Okay, we call, it, we call them product registration holder, which is a local company with local address. Everything is local here, is legal here in Malaysia and must register with the company's commission of Malaysia. SSM with the scope business related to health and pharmaceutical product. Other than that, you cannot register your product uh, through the MPRA system. Okay, so from now on, we call them a PRH. Okay. So this is the responsibility of the PRH. So the PRH is responsible to provide all information pertaining to the quality, safety, and efficacy of the product to MPRA. Okay, during the product registration, even after the product get the ML number, after the product be registered, they still have the responsibility to provide all updates regarding any changes in the documentation of the product or any changes regarding to their uh, regarding to their information. Even if you they want to change your ad, their address, okay, the name of person that in contact with MPRA, they have to do variation, they have to notify MPRA. Okay, that is the responsibility of PRH. If anything happens to the product in the market, we also want to contact the PRH. Okay, that is the responsible of the PRH, the responsible person for that product. Okay. All right. So then uh, you have who going to register the product. This is who going to approve the product. Okay. So in Malaysia, we have a drug control authority to approve the product. Okay. Drug control authority approve every product that release here that is going to be used here in Malaysia. Okay. So MPRA is the secretariat to the DCA. Okay. So members of the DCA is our very famous DG. Okay. He's the chairman. Okay. So the the chairman is our boss, the director of pharmaceutical services, okay, followed by the director of MPRA and another eight members appointed by the Minister of Health. Okay, we have the doctors, physicians, we have the pharmacists, we have the ones of our professors from local universities. Okay, we even have the vet doctors in public service and the head secretary uh, is the pharmacist from the public service. Currently, is the uh, boss in the... Uh, uh, evaluation uh, center in MPRA. Okay, so what are the main tasks for this uh, DCA? That is to review matters related to product registration, to consider recommendation proposed by MPRA, that is to register the product, to register any product, or to reject any product application, or even to suspend or cancel registration of a product that didn't follow our regulation and rules. Okay, and to make decision related to regulatory policy. Also, we can, uh, DCA can impose requirements for registration of products. Okay. So this is the task of the DCA. For, do, you, do you remember? Okay, the first vaccine that we approved, Pfizer. Okay, we being approved immediately by uh, DCA and we generate the ML number exactly after that. Okay, during Maghrib time, prayer time. Okay, so after that, 
this is the our main reference okay to set up you need the documentation to send to mpra okay for the registration so these are the main reference so what do we need uh the list of documentation okay you can get it from this main reference we call it the drug registration uh, guidance document the rgd so these are the rgd you can get it from our mpra website okay it's very thick it's for all of the products all of the category of the products okay it have section a general overview section b is all about the product registration process very important okay section c is all about the quality control what we need okay, to ensure the quality of the product section d is about inspection uh, uh, it's all about inspectorates, okay, inspection, licensing, and certificate. Section E is a post-registration process, mean after your registration, what you're going to do as, uh, to maintenance of the registration. Okay, so sadly, for this pandemic, okay, it doesn't elaborate uh, on how to manage the registration okay, precisely during this pandemic. So on uh, the 3rd December, 2020, our DCA agree on the fast track conditional registration for pharmaceutical product during disaster. We, so we come up with this guidance. Okay, so uh, for the registration of COVID-19 vaccine, we are using this guidance. Okay, this is the fast track guidance to register the COVID-19 vaccine. Okay, so these are the link. You can go to the link and have a read uh, on the guidance. Okay, it's not as thick as the real one. Okay, you can manage to read it. <laughs> this is a very famous when it first come out, it's become it's become a hot cakes for all of the manufacturer around the world. Okay, I've been receiving all of the emails of the call regarding this uh, guidance. Okay, so first thing first, okay, in the guidance, we put in the definition of the disaster. Okay, because uh, looking at the, at the title of the guidance, we didn't mention uh, precisely on COVID-19 vaccine. We mentioned uh, registration of pharmaceutical product during disaster, during disaster, so any disaster. Okay, let's say we already passed the COVID-19 pandemic, we have another disaster, okay, they also can be used. Okay, that's the thing. So these are the definition of disaster. So our MKN, okay, define the disaster as an incident that occurs in a sudden manner, yes. Okay, and complex in nature, Yes, COVID-19, and it causes losses of life, yes, damages to property or natural environment and bring deep, deep effect to local activity, yes, MCO for so many times, okay. So such incidents need a management that involves, okay, extensive resources, yes, equipment, skills and workforce from many agency, yes, okay, with an effective coordination, with, which is uh, possibly demanding a complex action and take a long time, yes. Okay, so in Malaysia, okay, the COVID-19 pandemic is under the purview of Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act 1988. Okay, so uh, it fits under the definition of disaster. Okay, so now you have a vaccine product with you. Okay, we need to evaluate the scope and eligibility or the vaccine. So you want to register, come to MPRA, check out, okay, look, I have this COVID-19 vaccine. I want to register under this fast track. This is the things that we look into before we, we give you, yes, you can go into this pathway. Okay. The first we look into your scope. Okay. It's a new pharmaceutical product, including vaccine to use uh, for to use during disaster, okay. No, we defined it previously. Pandemic COVID 19 is a disaster, so yes. So, next we look into the eligibility condition, okay. This is important, okay. The first one, okay. The disease is serious, okay, or immediately life threatening. Yes, COVID is serious and life threatening and has the potential of causing an outbreak, pandemic, or Epidemic. So outbreak, yes. Pandemic, yes. Okay. So number one, take, yes. Okay. Number two, existing product have not been successful in eradicating the disease or preventing outbreaks. <clears throat> yes. Uh, no treatment whatsoever uh, have yet been created to disease and no no vaccine whatsoever at this point, like at that point. Okay. So yes. Number two, yes. Okay. Number three, the product should be at least in an ongoing phase three clinical study. Okay. And uh, the last uh, sentence, okay, that clearly demonstrates the safety and efficacy of the product. Okay, so at uh, at that moment, okay, last year during, uh, from October last year, there's a lot of manufacturing companies that producing the vaccine and so on. Okay, so everybody is claiming they all are uh, efficacy, they all are, uh, have the efficacy to, to treat the disease, to prevent 
to prevent the disease, to prevent the infection outbreak. Okay, so these are things that we look into. Okay, you cannot uh, claim that you have phase three because uh, phase three at the moment, because we all know, okay, during that time, so everybody is in either phase one or phase two. Okay, so every company that comes to us must give a, a result, a proven result, a, a proof that they already have a phase three. I mean, phase three, okay, we know that the product is almost ready. It's ready. It's already proven <clears throat> that they have a safety, provide a safety, safety records okay to show the safety rates and also the uh, efficacy efficacy rates of the product okay so this is important you don't have this in the product okay we're going to reject your application immediately okay number four this is equally very important okay the product must have at least given authorization for use or have obtained marketing authorization okay from national regulatory agency uh, Re national regulatory authority of the origin country meaning if the product if the vaccine is produced in Switzerland it must be approved to be used in Switzerland it must be used in Switzerland first before you come here and bring the product and um, you want to register product here in Malaysia okay that is the point number one and point number two it also must be approved uh, by the DCA reference agency. So we in Malaysia, our reference agency is the EMA, is the European Medicine Agency and US FDA, US uh, Food Drug Administration. Okay, those two are our reference agency. You don't have those two, then no. Okay, or WHO, World Health Organization. Okay, these are the four important points that we look into when we choose which one uh, vaccine COVID-19 to be registered to be used here in Malaysia. Okay, this is very important. Okay, so what are the timeline uh, to for this conditional registration process? Okay, so the maximum timeline is 120 working days. Okay, do you remember previously when I said uh, the main reference is our DRGD, the thick one, uh, that have section A and T E? Okay. Usually the normal registration pathway is for uh, to register biologic is 245 days. Okay, so for this uh, pandemic, for this fast track is 120 working days. Okay, that is the maximum. But usually we do it lesser than that. I think for Pfizer, uh, the company is very good, replying to us very well. Okay, less than uh, less than one month, we already get the approval. Okay, that is how fast we're working. We, we even work at night. Okay, for the country. You want the demi negara moment, this is the moment how you help the country. Okay. So the validity of the conditional registration. Okay, when the product is being registered, when the vaccine COVID being registered, okay, the conditional registration is valid for one year. So after one year, okay, the company have to renew the conditional registration. Okay, that if we will ask the company, do you want to renew the conditional registration? They say, yes, they have to renew. So they will give it another one year. Then after that one year, another one year. So maximum they can renew is for two years. So the conditional registration is being given for three years. Lah. For three years. Then after that, they can have to go into full registration. Okay, if you get the full registration, then the registration is valid for five years. Okay, so that's the thing. Lah. Conditional registration is only one year. Okay. Okay, so now you have the vaccine, your vaccine is eligible to register to MPRA. So what are the documents that you need to send to MPRA? Okay, uh, so a lot of company come to me saying that, saying that they have the vaccine, they have the vaccine. Then I will say, okay, do you have the dossier? Okay, so what is a dossier? So a dossier is all of the requirements, all of the documents that you need okay to register to mbra some people are, uh, does not understand what is dossier okay sometimes give me a leaflet okay leaflet is not a dossier a dossier if you um if you print the dossier make it into a file it can come in a as much as one big cabinet or a few trolleys okay even vaccine is usually three trolleys three full of trolleys of uh, documentations okay that is a dossier okay so <clears throat> fast tracks meaning a conditional registration okay we have um, nine documents that we need okay i can go fast on this one okay <laughs> for number one we have we need the manufacturing and quality control documents so these are the list of documents that we want for example the process validation data for drug substance drug substance is the ingredient we need at least for three batches that is the minimum and also it's uh validation data for that product okay you can go over the list on and on anything you, do, you want to ask you can ask later or maybe you can phone me or email me all right 
Okay, this is all about manufacturing and quality control. It's all about the quality of the product and drug substance. Okay, so next okay, is the labeling requirement. Okay, we need the package insert. Okay, everybody in the world want to read. Okay, uh, important information about the kit is very important. Okay, also the fashion information leaflet. And also very important, the most important one is the label of the product. Okay. Okay, label on the vial itself, vial, the, the vaccine vial itself, and label on the box okay, itself. Okay, so the next one is a good manufacturing practice, GMP requirements. Okay, this is pertaining to the factory, to the manufacturing site that manufacture the vaccine. Okay, we need to make sure, this is important, crucially important, that we need to make sure that the factory that manufacturing the vaccine are GMP compliance. Okay, must must follow the GMP requirements. Okay, does not follow the GMP requirement, does not have GMP certificate, we will reject the uh, application immediately. Okay, so not, uh, so number four, we need the good distribution practice, GDP and supply chain requirement. This is for logistic to ensure that is follow the logistic, the cold chain is all in order. Okay, so that the product is of quality, it does not spoil. Okay, so number five is the safety and pharmacovigilance. Okay, this is uh, to do the post-registration process. Okay, it all reflects on the safety of the product. So as you can see here on 5.3, sorry, it's actually 5.3, it's not 5.2, the last one. Okay, we even asked for the contact details, the respons responsible person for pharmacovigilance. If anything happened to the product, we will call directly the, uh, to, the, to the person in the company, okay, uh, of the products, okay. So number six, okay, this is a very important, the clinical study. So all clinical trials, clinical study are sent here in uh, this clinical data. Okay, we have special team in evaluating the clinical, in the clinical data. Okay, this is where um, company will send the reports that proven the efficacy and the safety of the product. Okay, usually during our meeting and discussion with the evaluator, this will be discussed at least one day only for the discussion of the efficacy and safety of the product. Okay, see so number seven is a non-clinical data and good laboratory practice requirement. Okay, we need to ensure that the laboratory used to manufacture the product okay, are following the, uh, following the GLP. Okay, so non-clinical data is, uh, is the storage, is a stability study. Okay, how long you can, the product can be we stand in that storage, okay? So we also need the lot release, lot release document. So lot release actually a real-time system to continuously monitor product quality. It's to what review and testing. So every product be released, every vaccine be released into the market have to undergo the lot release requirement. Okay, so nine other supporting document, of course we need the letter authorization of from manufacturer of the licensing, okay, and application letter lah, to for cold chain facility verification inspection. Okay, so these are the document. This is not as long as uh, the ones that mentioned in the uh, main reference. Okay, this is for fast track. It's, a, it's very long. Okay, so now you have all of the document. You are ready to submit to MPRA. Okay, so how to submit to MPRA? Okay, right now we does not receive we. Not can uh, does not receive a manual submission. Okay, everything is in online. Okay, so uh, PRH have to register Quest Plus membership. So our online registration system is a Quest Plus system. So <clears throat> upon getting the username and password, click enter, and then it you're gonna have a long, uh, a long exhausting. Uh, forms to fill in, okay, according to the section that I mentioned before, uh, in our main guidelines, we have section A, B, C, D, okay, until E, okay, that is how long, okay, the most experienced PRH to fill in this form, they will take two to three days just to fill in the forms before it's sent to us, okay, then after that, okay, finish everything, you click send, the first thing you send to us is not the real, um, uh, will not go into the evolution tray, it will go into the screening tray. Okay, so this is important. Okay, after this is important product registration process. Okay, so after you, okay, so after you click send, okay, your product will go into the, into the pre submission of registration application. 
Okay, so we will do all the screening. Okay, all of the screening is in the form of documentation. Okay, all of the form must be filled in. If not filled in, we reject back so that you can uh, uh, fill in all of the all of the columns of the, the columns, all of the documentation that we need must be uploaded. And in, and most importantly, we must make sure that you have all of the GMP requirements. When you uh, the company, the PRH must upload the GMP certification inside the form. Okay, when the pre-submission application, uh, registration application is approved, okay, then you can submit, click submit, okay, into our, um, into our evaluator tree. Okay, then we're going to start the first screening process. The first screening process is just to divide the documentation into the trees of the respective sections. Okay, so entire MPRA will do the uh, data evaluation for all of the documentation that been submitted. Okay, so we will do uh, evaluation. Okay, we take few days, few days to evaluate. Okay, usually we evaluate in 60 working days, but during this pandemic, okay, maybe in one week. Okay. So after that, we will, uh, for this COVID-19 vaccine, okay, we will, all of the questions, we will, anything that we want to ask the PRH, we collect all of the questions. Okay, so the first question we can, we will send a few hundred questions. Okay, let's say when I have, uh, when I send that 300 questions, that is the first correspondent to the PRH, to the company. Okay, we will give some time for the company to reply to our question. We call it, we call this session is correspondence. So every correspondent is in the question plus system. You don't use email, you don't use telephone. Okay, these are the uh, official records of the uh, process evolution. Okay, so after the company replied, after the parish replied, Okay, if we still have another question, we will give another correspondent up to five to ten times, okay, for this COVID-19 vaccine. So after we are satisfied with all of the answer, okay, all of the evaluators, we will uh, set up a meeting. Okay, the meeting of the Drug Evaluation Committee monthly, okay, we will present your uh, the vaccine, we present the product to the committee. So the chair of the committee, the director of MPRA. So we will decide whether or not this product is ready to bring into the meeting, to table into the DCA meeting. Okay, if the vaccine is ready, the product is ready to be tabled to DCA meeting, we bring it to the DCA meeting, table in the DCA meeting, uh, which is chaired by our DG. So uh, DG and the committee will decide whether to give approval to this vaccine. Okay, so let's say the uh, uh, vaccine is approved. Okay vaccine is approved and we will generate the ML number on the same day. Okay. And after that, the PRH can apply for license, for import license to import the, to import the vaccine from overseas into our country. And then the uh, uh, vaccine can be used in the country. Okay. That is how the process. Okay. Let's say the product is rejected. Okay. It's, the product is rejected. The PRH is given 14 days. To appeal for the rejection, okay, meaning to appeal so that the uh, it can the product can be reevaluated, okay. So this is the registration process, okay. Usually all of the process we do it in 245 days, but only for this pandemic it's less than that, less than 120 days, okay. All right. Okay, so these are the supply of COVID vaccine that been acquired by Malaysia. Okay, this is under the agreement to the to Malaysia. Okay, so we have this five vaccine. Okay, I, I got this from the JKJAV uh, website. Okay, so at the green, around green. Okay, so the over, overall number of doses that we already, that government already uh, secured for Malaysia is 66.7 million. That is more than 100% uh, for those residing in Malaysia. It's more than enough actually. Okay, so these are the vaccine. We have Pfizer, we have AstraZeneca, Sinovac, Casino Bio, and Sputnik V. Okay, so uh, we already approved Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and Sinovac. Okay, right now we are evaluating the Casino Bio and Sputnik. Okay, all right. So, okay, so these are vaccine that being registered in Malaysia. The details. Okay, so the first one community from Pfizer. Okay, this is from Belgium. The second community is from Germany, second source. Okay, the third one is AstraZeneca vaccine. Okay, it's not yet, I think, in Malaysia. We're going to receive the ones uh, from Thailand. 
and another from COVAX facility, also we choose AstraZeneca, that is from South Korea. Okay, number four is CoronaVac, actually it's Sinovac from China. Okay, so the PRH is from Managa Life Science, in the Amber Heart. Okay, they are here today, yeah? Okay, so, okay, so when we, you know, we put up the guidance to register uh, products using the conditional registration during disaster, so a lot of company that comes to us, Okay, want to register, register, register. We have received a lot of um, a lot of application actually. Okay, so ideally is one PRH, one vaccine. Okay, you cannot have one vaccine managed by, by so many PRH. Okay, so we came up with this. Okay, that's mean conditional registration for COVID-19 vaccine will only be given to the ones applied to the government or those authorized by government. Okay. Meaning other COVID-19 vaccines still can register, but they were going to follow the normal pathway. We did the full registration, not the conditional registration. Okay. This is also to ensure that our national immunization program will work well. Okay. Actually, government already bought more than enough for all of the, for all of the population in Malaysia. Okay. More than enough. Okay. Some, and it is free for all. Okay, I need you all to support the immunization program as well. Okay, so if you need more information on the vaccine, okay, on any of the product or any of the vaccine that uh, we release into market that we approve, you can go to our website. Go to our website here, mpra.gov.my. Go to Pharma Search. Okay, you can click number one, industry. Number two, product search. Okay, wait a Okay, then after that, you're going to have this uh, page. Okay, make sure it's uh, click here, pharmaceutical. Okay, you click number three. Either you want to search by product name or ingredient or ML number. If you have the ML number, you put search and click search. You're going to have this. Okay, this here, product name and community, Pfizer. Okay, I want to uh, look into Pfizer. I want to search information on, on uh, Pfizer vaccine. Okay, so you have this ML number. You click here, ML. Okay, you're gonna have this. Okay, all of the information on the Pfizer. Okay, so uh, let's say you're gonna, uh, we need to see the package insert because we need to see the uh, safety safety profile or efficacy rate. Okay, you're gonna have this. You click D3 community and you're gonna have the package insert. Okay, that is how we, uh, we get the information. Okay, all information are here in the package insert. Okay. Okay, apart from that, MPRA, MPRA also do the post-registration activities. Okay, that's mean if the PRH want to update any information regarding the products, they can do variation. So we have two variation guidelines for COVID-19 vaccine. We have the Malaysian variation guideline for biologics and Malaysian variation guideline for pharmaceutical products. And also MPRA do the post-marketing surveillance, the adverse event following immunization, AEFI monitoring from time to time. Okay, so we also have any safety updates. We're going to upload it in our website. Okay, these are the example for community. All right. So any inquiries you want to ask MPIA, you can go to our website. Okay, click industry, help the support. Okay, fill in the inquiry form. Okay, we will reply you within one to three days. Usually we you usually within one day. Okay. So our email is MPIA at mpiagov.my. You can ask anything. Okay, and also our phone line is 0378835400. That is our general line. Okay. So with that, thank you. I think most of us here are phase three to get the COVID-19 vaccine. I hope everyone here willing to get the vaccine. Okay, lindungi diri, lindungi semua ya. Okay, thank you very much. Back to you, Prof. Okay, thank you, Dr. Jaslina, uh, for the very informative uh, talk on the uh, process of registering a vaccine. Eh? Okay, uh, I have some questions for you. Um, the first one, uh, I'm, I'm going to combine two questions together. Uh, the first one would be um, here. Let me just see. Okay. The, um, I think uh, does all the COVID-19 vaccines will be registered using the fast track. Um, and then this, I think, I think uh, probably you answer that one first because the second one is a bit longer. Okay. Um, so far, we register all in the fast track. But, but but we also look into the eligibility of all the vaccine. If it's not ready in the terms of clinical trial, especially the phase three, it will not go under the fast track. 
Okay, yeah, okay. So phase three is critical. Uh, yes, phase three is very critical. I see. Okay, thank you. And the second one is that since the registration has been cut down from 245 days to 120 days, um, what are the process that have has been uh, enhanced to reduce the days needed to register the conditional registration? And would this be able to this able to apply to be applied to other registration in the future? I won't say that the process has been enhanced to reduce the days. It's just that we work harder <laughs> even at night. Okay, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same thing that we are uh, that we are evaluating. Okay, actually, it's just that we work twenty four seven just for this vaccine, just for this uh, occasion. Okay, I call it occasion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question: Would this be able to apply to other registration in the future? Yes, if this. Yeah. If there's another disaster, it fits under the, the disaster definition, then yes. Other than that, if the disaster being resolved, then it's back on track on the normal pathway. Okay, all right. Okay, it goes back to the normal pathway. Okay. Um, there's um, all right. So another question is that uh, after the PRH appealed, after the appeal, uh, the appeal process, how many working days will be uh, will be uh, for the approval? Okay, after the appeal process, okay, the applicant will be given at least uh, 120 days to provide all the information that we required, okay, during the correspondent, okay, that's okay. the maximum, it can be lesser than that. Okay, all right. And then we receive also another question. Um, we are also done with phase one peak, right? Uh, so how is the incident of uh, AFI, AEFI, for Com Comarty and Sinovac vaccine so far, the um, adverse reaction, I assume. Any comment? Uh, here, one moment, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, we are done with phase one. Um, so, PIC, P -I -C -K. I, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not familiar with this uh, term, PIC. So, how is incidence of uh, AFI, AEFI for Comati and Sinovac vaccine so far? Just want to know what's the um, incidence of AFI for Comati for the okay, two vaccines. For the AEFI, you mean the phase one after the after the phase one, yeah, first phase one yeah. of the immunization program. Okay, yeah. you want to know the AEFI. Okay, actually mm. the report have not been released yet. Okay, it's still been evaluated by the teams. Okay. It will, uh, the report will be released okay, after it's yeah. been uh, presented to the JKJAV and the cabinet. Okay, that will be pretty soon, I assume, uh, to, to assess the phase two and so on, to give an idea of uh, how you're going to combat the, uh, going to have the second phase as well? Would yes. Be, yes. Yes, okay. Um, which international documents or guidelines did MPRA use? as the reference in proposing the guidelines for the fast track registration of pharmaceuticals during disaster? Mainly we use the IMA. IMA, oh, okay. All right, the European Manufacturing Medicine Agency. Okay, all right. Um, I have more questions for you. Uh, okay. Are you okay? Still say that there's so many questions. Okay, still okay, still okay, still in the morning. <laughs> okay, all right. So just, uh, just Lina, um, you know, with viral infections uh, like influenza, COVID nineteen, they they are they can be mutated over time. Um, so how would MPRA ensure that the um, vaccines, COVID, or maybe I think there'll be more. Uh, um, I assume in terms of the viral infection in the in the future. Um, the vaccines in the market continue to be effective yeah, during the period of registration because I understand that you have the one plus one plus one, then mm -hmm. they go for, you go for that um, the full registration. So how, how can you be uh, NPRA what do I, uh, what do NPRA do to ensure that uh, to ensure the uh, effectiveness or the efficacy of the vaccines over the, the time over a period of time? It's, it's not what the MPRA do, it depends on the company, on the owner of the product. So the owner of the product is the manufacturer. Okay, so okay. from time to time they will, um, I think they will... Report to you? 
not report to us, I think uh, they will replenish the formulation. Okay, for example, the virus has been mutating, mutating. So the, the vaccine actually is have the first generation, second generation, third generation. Okay, it's the same vaccine that but they're repairing the 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 molecules, the formulations of the vaccine. Okay, so uh, they did present to us. Okay, so when they do the changes, any changes that they do, they will report back to MPRA to all of the national regulatory agency around the world. Okay, that have the product being registered. Okay, that we, what we call it uh, registration is a post marketing activities that the ones that I presented before. Okay. That's how we counter it. Okay, so the first technology is the one re re released from Wuhan. Okay, that is the first technology. Okay, okay. Uh, creating the vaccine. Okay, now the virus being mutated from on to on to on. And now exactly. it's until African, I think. Uh, so the formulation, I think it's the same formation, but the molecule is changing. So anything, mm -hmm. any changes that we report to all of the national regulatory agency around the world. Mm, I see. Okay, because I think we're going to open uh, our borders pretty. I don't know, maybe in several months' time. So I'm yeah. sure that you know, hopefully, in several months' time. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, okay, okay. I got what you mean. <laughs> okay, um, okay. Any more questions for the third, just Lina, before we uh, move on to our second speaker? A quick one, uh, Associate Prof. Dr. Aisha. That's okay, Dr. Justina. Yeah, sure. Um, is WHO, the World Health Organization, directly involved in the uh, monitoring of AEFI? Yes, yes, we do report to them. We share the, the information with the WHO. Right. On what sort of um, basis? I mean, on, on uh, is it very regular? Is it uh, as soon as it happens or is there a monthly sort of... Um, we, we do have a regular and we do have the... Uh, ASAP. Right. Okay. It's not just for the COVID-19 vaccine. It's a usual process. Okay. Our usual work process for all of the pharmaceutical products. Okay. Got it. Got it. Thank you. All right. Is there anything more? Okay. I think uh, that's all. Um, that's all the questions from uh, the participants. So thank you so much, Dr. Jaslina, for the for demystifying the process of the vaccine registration.